Hey YouTube, this is Itchy, and I wanted to give you a quick update on some things that have been going on over at Fukushima. And there's been a little bit of uh, misinformation that has been given out by TEPCO, uh, and that was uh, disproved today. Now, this is a video of um, the reactors from a couple nights ago, and the ocean is actually behind the reactors here, and you can see a large amount of what appears to be uh, smoke or steam that are is coming out of the, the direction of um, reactor two and three and if you recall two is the one who's been ha having problems with the temperature controls in the reactor pressure vessel which if you go back and you search um, the the news you'll see that the containment was um, was compromised and and that was known by the um, the uh, electric company that runs the site, TEPCO, and it was known by Prime Minister Can, and it was also known by the NRC and our government all the way back in the beginning of April. And they buried this story and they keep pretending that everything is okay at these reactors, that they're in cold shutdown, and that is just complete bullshit. You cannot have cold shutdown of a cracked reactor vessel where the fuel has leaked out and is in the ground. Now there may be some remnants of the fuel remaining in that reactor vessel. In fact, there was a endoscope that was done on reactor two about four weeks ago. And since then, there has been a steady increase of one of the temperature gauges after they poked a hole in this reactor to look around. Now, if you look at videos of what that film showed, there were actual gamma rays being visualized on the film. They were not able to locate the fuel. Um, there's obviously some kind of fuel in there that would be causing these uh, gamma rays to occur. But you know, now, a few nights ago, we, we have smoke and steam that are pouring out of it. This is not the only video that documents this. There's, there's several on this guy's site where you can see there's been steam coming out of pipes. Um, there's been steam coming out of the ground at night. These are not fog events. After watching these cameras for 10 months, I know the difference between uh, fog that's rolling in and steam that's coming out of the ground. The problem is that steam is not just steam. It's radioactive steam. And uranium has a tendency to, once it starts reacting, and it doesn't need any special circumstances to start reacting, it can just bounce off other electrons and it spreads like a wet. And if it starts at one reactor, it can spread to the pools. They've had problems cooling the pools lately. And, um, and TEPCO has been saying, well, they think that the temperature gauge might be broken because there's two other gauges in there and they seem to be okay. And yesterday a report came out saying that another temperature gauge that's in the containment vessel around that vessel is also reporting high. And a Washington blog came out today also saying that um, the temperature now and, and the, the goal is to keep it under 80 degrees Celsius to maintain cold shutdown status. And um, what's actually happening, oh, let me find my thing here. Where is it? Fukushima reactor temperature surpasses 752 degrees more than four times maximum for cold shutdown. This was posted on a Washington blog yesterday. That's over 400 degrees Celsius. Now today, Fukushima Diary, who has been um, following the story since the get-go, um, he has had several uh, people who are working on the Fukushima site that have been giving him information. He had a phone conversation uh, with a nuclear worker and a former worker at the Fukushima site who said, in short, if the temperature goes up to six to 700 degrees Celsius, reactor two will explode. Now, considering that the fuel probably isn't even in that reactor, it's in the ground underneath, that in itself is really not as big of a concern. But what the concern is, any kind of fission that develops can infect the other reactors, the corium in the ground, and the spent fuel pools that are on site. And there's six of them, plus a common spent fuel pool that's in the ground. If this fission reaction starts occurring, um, 
this would be very, very bad. This is probably the worst thing that could possibly happen outside of a hydrovolcanic explosion. And the architect of Reactor 3 has been saying for months that that could happen any day because of the corium that's fissioning in the ground. Um, today, there was a report that came from Tohoku University saying that all the faults underneath the plant have been activated and that one good shake on that site could cause the spent fuel pool to fall. But if these reactors and the corium and the spent fuel pools all start infecting each other, um, which, uh, which could very well happen with how things are falling apart in that, at that site, what we would have to do over here is, um, is do the same thing if one of our major cities was nuked and any of us live downwind from that. And I'm going to enclose some links at the bottom. And this is not to scare people. This is to tell you what the government is not telling you, what TEPCO isn't telling you, what Japan isn't discussing, and that this could happen any day. And, and based on the earthquakes that are going on over there, on the, the cameras, the, the the radioactive steam that's pouring out of the ground, the temperature that's rising um, in, in this reactor, and the fact that today TEPCO um, decided to come clean and say that xenon had been detected in the Reactor 2 containment vessel. Xenon is a product of uranium fission, so that means that there is recriticalities that are going on. It doesn't say what the detection limits are, there's a possibility that this detection has been ongoing this whole time. Um, you know, we have fluctuations in the cesium levels in the last few days. They've been really high in Tokyo. Today, if you look at uh, the weather maps, okay, Fukushima is right here. Everything's blowing out to the ocean today, and that's what's forecasted for the next few days. And I checked a couple different weather sites to confirm this. So we go to our um, animation of the jet stream, and let me just pull this down a little bit so you can see dates. This would be Sunday. Here we go. This is today. So whatever's been released in the last two to three days at the plant is hitting right here now. Um, and this looks like the pattern that it's going to be for the rest of this week. So we're talking everything from uh, the southern coastal areas of Alaska coastal areas of British Columbia, that includes Vancouver, um, you know, Seattle, Portland, Northern California, all the way down to probably LA. These areas would have to shelter indoors for a period of two to four weeks. And that's not me saying that. That's what the civil defense research had indicated would have to happen in order to protect the health and welfare of our citizens if there was a nuclear attack. This is a nuclear attack that's that's been happening. Um, but if if we have some kind of fission event that infects the other pools at that site, uh, the, the significance of this is going to go up substantially. And it needs to be taken very seriously. Now, I'll be posting updates if anything crazy happens. Um, I will be sending out alerts to Orion and we'll probably run something uh, on the air about that. Um, I'm also going to post my Facebook page where um, this is continually updated throughout the day. I have six other people and then some helping me post news and radiation reports and sickness reports and earthquakes and everything that could possibly be going on, be going on right now over there that, that could affect the radiation levels over here. Um, it gets posted on this page and it's updated all day long. So if you're on Facebook, um, make sure to check this out and, and sign up for it. And uh, other than that, monitor YouTube. I'm sure there'll be a, a few people that'll be posting. Um, in regards to the forecast that I've been doing, uh, what what it looks like is happening is all the areas that, uh, that are along the edge of the jet stream that had been warned for a potential fallout. Um, people are recording high levels. In those areas, uh, Dutch Sense and Potter Blog uh, recorded over 100 CPMs in the snowfall yesterday. Some of that is radon detection, but you know, if it's if it's radon, it should be coming out of the ground every time there's precipitation. 
there could be radon that's getting steamed out of the ground in Fukushima as well from the groundwater. So, um, you know, it's a it's an alert level. It's happening right now in St. Louis. That is moving into um, the the areas of the Virginias today, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York. Uh, if you guys, if you're paying attention to this, that's great. But we have this closed loop of information this closed loop of people that are paying attention to this. And what we really need to do is start posting this kind of stuff on other news sites, on weather sites, on mainstream news, not with the expectation that the mainstream is going to run any stories about this, but for, for the people who are going there, reading comments and posting to draw their attention to this, because this, this is the, the biggest thing that has ever happened. To, to humanity is going on right now. This is a shit hitting the fan and it's been hitting the fan and 90% of the people have no idea that's going on. And if this is some kind of um, shelter in scenario, you know, people need to be prepared for this. And that means stocking up on water, perishable, you know, non-perishable food, diapers, medications, two to four weeks, you're not going to be able to leave your house if that thing goes. And I don't know what else to say. It's a mess. It's horrible. It's terrible. It's a travesty. Um, it, it's the, the people that are, are paying attention to this are so distraught and so disturbed because it's not being reported and it, and it needs to be. This has got to be on the top of everyone's radar right now. It's that important. Share this around with everyone you know. Stay safe. I'll keep you updated. Represent a soul right but there's people out there that just they don't want you to have the freedom of a river you know instead they want to poison the river and then say you should be prepared but we're not going to teach you how to be prepared we're just going to ask you to accept your fate because you're doing it for the better of mankind so that's what Fukushima has taught me I should have been prepared long before it happened better yet better yet Maybe I should be outspoken and, and put my vote in there, being that we do live in a democracy, and say that I vote against nuclear energy. I live in British Columbia, Canada. Now, I know that, you know, bringing in um, power plants in terms of the river system and dams isn't necessarily always a good thing for the environment either. But between that, uh, we have clean hydro in British Columbia because we have rivers and dams and we have mountains and you know not that it's going to make much of a difference because now we have companies coming in wanting to frack our mountains for for gas that's buried deep into the rock so again where's the corporate soul you know you, you know the one that comes in and fracks the mountain and and pollutes the groundwater with 500 different freaking chemicals because they learned that they could get away with it in the United States of America now think that they can do it here because some bozo sitting up in the parliament building can write his signature down and say oh yeah no problem because next year I'm going to make 500 grand instead of 250 grand this year you know there's your soul there's your soul so anyway these oh I got beautiful little birds where are they they come every day Yesterday they were feeding for like four hours. I had a whole batch of them. One just flew off. So I'm going to set my camera up. I'm going to do a little bit of bird watching. So this is way too long. But you know what? I ain't living forever. And uh, I've really stuck my neck out for this nonprofit. Because I love my kids and I want them to have a future. I want them to feel that they live in a free, free society. I want them to know that there's justice. Sometimes you have to fight for the justice, but at the end of the day, you know, as human beings, we come into the world one by one, and we leave the world one by one. And nobody under philosophy really knows why we're here, other than to maybe leave a, leave, leave a positive impact leave a positive impact. So my Fukushima experience is the first number one lesson is if you're not prepared now, get prepared. Because it could be, well it will be, because again we're not infallible. Uh, there will be another nuclear accident somewhere and it's just going to add more problems to the environment. So we need to find ways to um, correct that as a collective. <laughs>